Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. I know most of you guys are used to me covering War of the Visions content, but I have been having a lot of fun with a new game called Dark Deity that just released on Steam. It's a tactical indie game. Uh, it just came out. It's not a high budget game. Uh, if you are expecting super high budget, perfected polish that's not what you're going to get from this game it's fire emblem esque if you're a little familiar with fantasy general 2 it has some elements of that i wanted to show off the gameplay kind of show the different aspects of it show you some combat and why i'm really enjoying this game let's go ahead and dig in so i am on chapter 18 but i did start a save out on chapter 11 and the reason i wanted to do this is i did want to highlight to you guys kind of how the game functions and the three different aspects of the game the first aspect of is of course your camp or your base which is what you're seeing right now the second aspect is going to be your planning for battle and the third aspect is actually battle so coming in here and taking a look at our units, you can see I have plenty of units. And in my chapter 18 save, I have significantly more units as well. They all have their own skills. Uh, they all have four different weapons. And each of these weapons, we'll get to more here in just a second, but they kind of add a little pizzazz to the characters. And they are all quote unquote viable. So you do not deploy them all. Uh, you kind of, as your roster grows, some of your characters kind of get pushed towards the back end. So, for example, I have this character, uh, Sophia, right here, who I got in the beginning. She was really strong, and I was using her. But in this game, when a character dies, they actually are not perma-dead, but they lose some of their base stats. And so what ended up happening is she died a few times. My other units were alive for the battle, and so they were getting EXP and she kind of fell by the wayside. And that is just kind of how the game happens. It kind of happens naturally. I am playing on a moderate difficulty. I'm not playing on the most advanced difficulty, but the game itself, there's no grinding. You can't grind to level up your characters. You can only level through the main storyline. And as you're progressing, some characters are gonna die, right? And you could restart, but if you're doing a mission for like 45 minutes, you might not wanna restart, right? And some of these missions get very complicated and very in-depth and it's very, it's a very nice change of pace compared to some of the other tactical games that have come out recently because a lot of the tactical games that have come out really easily the first half of the game is like vanilla combat with no challenge in this game i was dying on like mission three and four consistently like it was brutal the inventory system you do get these things called aspects as well aspects are basically like materia for your units you can only equip one at a time so you can see here if i go to eternal aspects i have a whole bunch of different aspects to customize and adjust each character with might grant 40 percent resistance to arcane magic another one's going to give each turn grants a one percent buff to advanced stats uh, enemies are much more likely to attack the wearer that's holding this this is pretty much the extent of the inventory system you have healing items you have stat boosters to permanently boost your stats which even at chapter 18 out of 28 i don't have enough gold to buy those and then you have eternal aspects that you can put on your characters now talking about characters and kind of how you upgrade them and how they kind of change throughout the game every single character has four weapons and each weapon is in one of the categories that's power finesse focus and balance and each character has this i can go down the list here and you can see that every character has these power finesse focus balance but they might have different stats here and they might be more beneficial for different characters or you might want to level up multiple so as you're playing the game, you do get tokens to level up these skills. And so you can see here, if I wanted to increase Arima's fire dart to increase more damage, I could use one of my tokens here and upgrade that. Now, where the strategy comes in, right, is you have some of these characters that might get dropped by the wayside. So as you're progressing through the game, do you just upgrade one character and make sure to keep with them the whole time, right? Because these tokens, 
you know, even as far in the game as I am, they are hard to get. Like they are, these are base upgrades to your characters. And if you invest them in characters that you're not going to use or you're not taking care of, that's like upgrades that are wasted, right? Because they're not in your primary kit. And as I'll show you here in chapter 18, there are a lot of characters and I have wasted a lot of my tokens on them. In terms of the four modes here, uh, you basically have power, which is like attack damage. You have finesse, which is critical hit rate, which we can, we'll talk about as well when we get to the combat system. Focus, which is accuracy. And it's actually really important if you are buying this game, make sure you invest in focus because I made the mistake of not investing in focus and I am in chapter 18 right now suffering with my accuracy and it is getting me killed a lot. So invest in focus. It is very important. Finally, we do have fire rune or balance, which is kind of like a balance of all of them. I have a couple characters that are invested in balance, but most were in power and finesse, and it really just screwed me in the end. There are bonds between the characters, and you can see, for example, like little scenes here, which some people, you know, a lot of people play these types of games for these types of interactions. It's all text-based, there's no voice acting, uh, very similar to the story. They're very good. Uh, the story is very good as well. The story is definitely, it keeps you going, it keeps you involved. But for me, I really play for the gameplay and that is really what I'm here for and that is what is keeping me. Uh, popping out to the main menu real quick, I will show you my chapter 18 file and we will show battle prep for you. And keep in mind, this is pretty far into the game. So we are actually pretty close, 10 missions away. Each character uh, starts out with a specific class. And in terms of job classes, you have like mage, you have white mage, you have thief, and every character, their base class is set, right? So maybe they're a warrior, maybe they're a thief, maybe they're a mage, maybe they're a healer, right? So from there, they have four different classes that they can become, and then they have four more that they can become after that. So there is a slew of classes, uh, this is the prep screen, and you can see how many characters I have right now. I am only using these top half characters currently. These characters down below, I am not using at all. And it's great. It's fun. And pulling up the battle screen here, you can go to map prep, and you can see just how in-depth, how large this map is. I have three deployment areas. I have varieties of enemies on the screen. I have a unit down here, Liberty, that I do have to protect. And my goal is to reach Liberty uh, before she dies, right? So taking a look here at my units and at the combat, let's start off with Brooke because Brooke is a very powerful unit of mine. You'll notice that over the enemy's indicators here, we have red and green. And this is of course meaning that she's gonna be really powerful against some units and she's going to be really weak against others. So we of course wanna match her up against the opponents that she's strong against. Sometimes though, you have no choice. So we're gonna go ahead and redeploy her over here because I have uh, been working on this map. This map has been very difficult for me, uh, specifically because the enemies are very evasive. Uh, you can see here all of these uh, thieves here. If I can pull them up here, you can see that they have extremely high dexterity, uh, which increases their accuracy and dodge. And then they also have speed, which increases their dodge and their true speed. It just becomes a pain in the ass to fight these guys. So I did kind of take the strategy of migrating over to the left side and then moving down that way and avoiding these enemies completely. Cause you can see this side is very evade heavy, right? Going down. Whereas if I come over here, this is very magic heavy. These guys are very magic-y. These guys are magic-y. Uh, so you can see that I'm kind of picking my battles just because I'm not well suited, you could say, to fighting on three different fronts. Uh, when I first started doing this map, I did try and fight on three fronts and it was definitely a mistake. Uh, I did come down and kind of get some sense knocked into me by the opponents. Um, I'm also at a point in the game right now where my opponents are a little bit stronger than me because you can unlock those tiers of classes that I was just talking about. And a great example is my two different characters here, Alden and Monroe. You can see that Monroe 
kind of looks a lot more badass. He's a pyromancer. He's got some cool ass animations. That's because he's unlocked his third class, which unlocks at level 30. Alden has not. So Alden is significantly weaker. And this stage, the enemies are more tuned for those job three classes. So for me, who is someone who doesn't have these job three classes or who has been using a variety of units or my tokens were spread out and I used a whole bunch of units that were not, you know, invested my tokens in in the beginning, it really does me in a lot and it makes the game extremely difficult, but extremely fun and rewarding to actually uh, fulfill and execute and even when a character dies and they have their permanent stats reduced you do find a situation where sometimes you're like okay maybe this is okay maybe I can pull this off right you're like I think I can I think I can make this happen uh, the turn system is very fire emblems esque as you can see uh, Brooke here I'm gonna come down here and you guys will actually get to see uh, me leveling up her class so you can see kind of what decisions I'm gonna make with that um, you can see here when I pull up combat it is going to give the standard kind of tactical information here and you do get the fire emblem esque animation uh, you get the counter you get the percentages up here and you can see that Brooke just dominated this guy pretty well uh we will attack from a range there's not very many ranged units in this game and that's probably one of the drawbacks i feel of this game is that you know there's like only mages and only rangers are ranged and they only really have one range like there's never like you're never in a situation where you're like oh yeah you know um I'm going to be able to attack you from three spaces away. You never really get to that point. And maybe it's locked between behind like a specific Ranger third class, which I haven't unlocked yet. I haven't seen it for my opponents yet. And I just kind of wish that I had uh, a little bit more range to play with. You can see here uh, with Alden as well, my hit rate is 68%. This is what I meant when I said I was struggling. And I could try any of my different weapons here. And this is a system that is great. Uh, and you can see here that I have different percentages, different hit rates. Uh, this one right here is two at 68%. This is either way you'll kill him. I'll go with the two times hit because that'll give me more as well. Uh, this specific attack is a magic based attack. Um, but you can actually have units once you hit tier three that the archetype of the power finesse uh, balanced and aim trees actually change and one of the examples is the level three dragon knight that you can get where his attacks actually become two fire and two magic which are two fire and two pierce sorry uh, which is something that really so changes up the gameplay once you reach that third tier and is another reason why I am struggling right now to kind of get to that point. And you can see here, uh, this is a unit that I haven't had a chance to invest in. I just recently got him, but I'm using him because he was given to me and my other units were falling behind in level. And you can see he's dealing significantly less damage and he's taking a lot more damage, even though he has a type advantage over this opponent. So a little bit of a bummer on that part and healing pretty much. You just run around and heal. Uh, my healer is also a damage dealer, but she doesn't deal that much. You can see these percentages for hit are just murdering me and the RNG the rng can just take you down right depending on what your leveling stat percentages are you really can't you know you really have to take it careful and think about it as you're playing the game an important note though at the beginning of this game uh you can actually change your game experience uh not only can you choose difficulty you can ask also add modifiers to your experience so maybe you want your units to have a higher HP percentage increase as you're playing the game. You can actually add that for your units uh, when you are creating your game. So a very important feature that I think is, you know, it, it's it's a little hidden and I wish it would be worked on a little bit more or maybe different game modes were added to it. Uh, but I was absolutely excited when I saw that. Again, we have uh, Ford here. You can see I got the different types of attacks here. Uh, he's at a type advantage here and we're gonna hope for a crit. And we did not crit, which is unfortunate, but that's okay because we can bring Fenton down here and he is going to take this guy out. And you can see he is approaching that ever infamous level 30. 
And then we have Monroe here, and Monroe is the most powerful mage in the game. Uh, he literally, like, when you get him, you're going to want to use him. He is that good. Uh, we got our Acolyte Faust here. Uh, he's a very cool character as well. I mean, it's just, it, it, the characters are nice, they're believable, they're relevant, it feels like, to the game. And normally, I don't play the games that are focused on specific characters. What I mean by that is I like being able to run generic characters and then class customize them because I find that, you know, most of the time, a lot of the customization comes from the player and not from kind of the developers. And I think that's one of the things they've done really well here um, is that they've really focused on kind of doing the things that need to be done and working on your different characters and kind of giving them all an identity, right? Uh, we are gonna run her back here into this corner and hopefully she won't get attacked here. Uh, the enemy AI is not the smartest. I would say the, oh, this is an example. I just had a unit die because the enemy AI, AI critted. Critical hit rate, little bit overpowered in this game, especially on the max difficulty setting because it feels like what you're playing against is critical hit rate RNG sometimes. Uh, you can see though, this is my healer. She died, she has a broken arm. Her strength is permanently reduced by two. I'll be able to take her into the next mission, but this was literally the first turn, right? So for me, I now have to consider, well, do I go on without her? Do I just make my other unit stronger? Like, how is this going to work? Taking Brook here, I'm going to go ahead and kill another enemy here. Brook again, of course, is my strongest fencer. An example of what happens when you do a character right and do a character really strong. Brook is a character that I just happened to get perfect. Gonna go ahead and deal that killing blow here. And this is what the promotion screen looks like. So we are going to get to show off kind of all the different classes. Now, uh, Brooke was initially a rogue here on the left side of the screen. Uh, I chose for her to be a duelist. She could have fit into either a thief, stalker, or a raider. Uh, really, now that I have her leveled up and I'm kind of messing around with her, I think I want to go gladiator with her. You see, she doesn't lose any of her pierce, I, so she'll still be a pierce attacker. If I became a trickster, she would become an arching character or a missile based character, uh, but her range is going to increase, which is nice as well. If I decided to make her an assassin character, uh, she would become a bladed character and her armor type would change. So she would gain defense and utility against uh, units she wouldn't normally have utility against. Or I could have her become a stalker, uh, which basically would be an axe user. And so you can see she gets skills here. So if she was a slayer, she would gain rampage, which is power increased by 4% for every kill. She would also gain annihilation, which is power increased by 35% against enemies at full health. So maybe I do want this. Maybe I want her to be a slayer. So let's go ahead and make her a slayer. One thing that's interesting as well here, you can see she used to be typed advantage here now she's type disadvantaged and she's type disadvantaged against a lot of enemies here so let's see if she's i mean she is this was the wrong decision right you can see that she is disadvantaged against almost every single enemy on this map that's not good so that was definitely the wrong decision i've already had a unit die here uh do i continue that's kind of the question right i do have alden at level 29 i could level him to level 30 kind of get that job promotion going but i'm not sure it's something i really want to do with him other than this this is mostly the game i think what you don't get to see on this map is the level of detail that really goes into the level design and I think the level design is probably the most important thing for me as a player that keeps me interested and keeps me playing. There's escape missions, there's protection missions, there is gathering missions. Your rewards can be increased if you speed up your mission, you know, execution. You can rescue players or other units to join your cause, or if you kill one of the enemy units when maybe you weren't supposed to, Maybe you won't have a unit join your team. There's all these different factors. There's such a variety of characters. I would definitely give this game a solid eight to nine out of 10. In order to get 10 out of 10 for me, there's a couple things more I would need. 
I would really love like being able to farm on the side. I'm curious what a second playthrough would look like. I'm almost considering starting a second playthrough because I feel like I've specced wrong on some of my units. And I would also want to see maybe crit toned down a little bit. I would like to see a couple more chapters added, maybe some more versatility with units. I think the token system is a little punishing right now, but there's a lot to add, a lot to see, kind of lots happening for this game, and I'm excited to see where it goes for the future. As always, everybody, if you do want to support me, uh, make sure you go to dig.gs coins. If you do want to see more of this game, uh, I would love to make content for it. Uh, but if you guys want to watch more, you have to let me know down in the comment section. Uh, so let me know. And as always, everybody, have a great rest of your day.